Broadcasting from the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee peoples, and since 1805, the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit. This is City News. A total eclipse of the sun. How millions were transfixed by just a few short minutes of darkness. Okay, Blue Jays, the boys of summer are back in Toronto for their home opener. You could see the ambulance moving up and down as they were doing compressions. And the frantic efforts to rescue a father and son from an Etobicoke apartment fire. This is City News Everywhere. Good evening and welcome to City News. It's perhaps the most rare celestial event many of us will ever see in our lives. A solar eclipse taking over Toronto skies and reaching totality in some surrounding cities. Stella Cuisto starts off our team coverage tonight in Niagara Falls where she took in the rare experience with nearly one million people. Eclipse fever has hit Niagara Falls as officials were expecting 1 million people to gather here today to experience this one in a lifetime event. <laughs> Celebration and awe in Montreal where thousands were treated to one of the best views of the eclipse in Canada. <laughs> a jaw dropping celestial spectacle as the path of totality crossed over North America. Hundreds of thousands flocked to Niagara Falls, built as one of the best places to catch the eclipse in Ontario. I'm from New York. New York. The city. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime kind of deal. We're from New Jersey. We are coming in from Ohio. They didn't quite get the full coverage due to some heavy cloud cover, but the massive crowd was still treated Whoa. to an incredible display as they plunged into total darkness just after 3 p.m. We were at Yellowstone and we caught in the middle of nowhere. And this time, we just decided we cannot miss it for anything. So we drove from just outside of D.C. It was really, really, really cool. Um, I have like I have no words. I'm kind of shocked in the minute. Unbelievable how um, it exponentially got darker as soon as it hits hit the maximum totality. Yeah. Yeah, like we noticed it getting darker and darker, but then the rate of it just increased exponentially. What I didn't think? expect to be so excited when I put on my glasses and was able to see the eclipse. Like, I didn't realize how, Oops. like, wild it would feel and how unreal it would feel it was pretty incredible this father from michigan has had this family trip marked on his calendar for nearly a decade we actually uh planned this back in june but i've been talking about coming here since the last solar eclipse in 2017. many ontario residents waking up before dawn for a chance to witness history i was here about 6 a.m i got the best spot on the falls for sure Cities in Mexico were the first to experience Monday's total eclipse, followed by residents in Texas. An estimated 31 million people live in the path of totality, offering many a once-in-a-lifetime shot at a total eclipse. But most of North America's population were able to see at least a partial eclipse. Canada won't experience another total eclipse till 2044. The path of totality will start in Greenland before making its way through Western Canada. For City News, I'm Stella Cuisto. And it was a day the city will remember for decades as just for a moment, thousands stopped what they were doing and looked to the sky. At Young Dundas Square, hundreds of people, including us here at City News, took to the streets to watch the darkness roll in. The bright red billboards were the only forms of light for a couple of minutes. Just east, many gathered at Riverdale Park with their blankets, snacks and glasses to watch the skies. And at the water, droves of beachgoers found an unobstructed view, hoping to get a glimpse of the moon and sun aligning. Not too far away, this time lapse shows darkness falling over the lake and financial district with buildings changing colors as the light disappears. And check out the cars and streetlights in front of the Rogers Center, all lighting up as the city goes dark. The long-awaited day finally arrived. The Jays came to Rogers Center for their first home game of the 2024 season. It was a 
great, great game. Great game tonight. They played really well. Pitching was awesome. I'm not sure why they pulled Burial so early, but whatever decisions uh, be made. I think the same as every year. High hopes, but uh, you know, just hopefully their pitching sticks together and. Uh, we left a little bit early and see if they're still winning right now. <laughs> well, I'm a Yankee fan, I'm a first off, but they, they look good until they play my team. I mean, home opener, we won for, uh, what was it, 4 1? 5 1? Something like that. Oh, yeah. We left after the end of the bottom of the eighth. We won. What? You can't complain. And the return of baseball in the city not only has Blue Jays fans flocking to Rogers Center for games, but to local businesses as well, which say they have been stocking up in preparation for the home opener. It was a busy afternoon outside of Rogers Center. The smell of hot dogs filling the air and lineups of people waiting to take a bite of a ball game staple. <laughs> the return of baseball also a treat for local performers who rely on the generosity of crowds. Yes, it's a lot of people out today and we are all here ready to come inside the Rogers Center and let the Blue Jays win this game. Before the game, local restaurants within walking distance say they were packed full of baseball fans. Anytime it's Blue Jays, a home opener, or may it be a local game, right? It's always a different uh, vibe, right? You see a whole, uh, whole wave of blue coming in. Right? The owner of the Boston Pizza on Front Street says he's been preparing by making sure the kitchen and bars are stocked and that there are more staff scheduled when the Blue Jays are playing. For more staffing uh, coming in for semis, we also have to cater with the Blue Jays season. That's why we always have pretty much double the amount of staff that we usually have. Our, you know, food, liquor, everything uh, is, uh, you know, definitely uh, on an increase in terms of ordering, in terms of selling. With the increase of crowds in blue also means an increase in green, with revenue at this Boston Pizza up nearly double what it would have been if a home game wasn't taking place. With the, the game coming home, it's always a pleasure because it brings up more business. People from outside also walk in. The local restaurants say it's best to call ahead to reserve a spot during game days. As for the home openers, the Jays won. They beat the Seattle Mariners 5-2. to two. We'll have full game highlights later on in the show. You may want to throw an umbrella in your bag tomorrow, but many areas across the GTA, you won't even have to pull it out. These are very isolated, tiny little pockets of showers and thunderstorms starting in the afternoon to the north and then to the east end as we head into the evening. But it's really going to be dry. In fact, we'll see the sun for the first half of the day tomorrow. Now, average high for this time of year is 10 degrees. It was well above that down through Windsor. I mean, they're high, uh, average highs closer to 12 or 13. But these are all well above seasonal, and it'll be even warmer tomorrow. Now, during that eclipse today, by the way, we took a little temperature drop by about one to one and a half degrees here, and then we rebounded through the rest of the evening. So again, just another uh, effect of that solar eclipse. Tomorrow morning, there's that sun, as I mentioned, and these are the little pockets of showers through the afternoon. They're going to be hit and miss. They may be a little bit stronger to the north and east of Muskoka going into the evening, but there's a little pocket uh, out through Barrie, Aurelia, and then one in through Durham. And again, don't like mark my words of exactly where these are going to hits they're going to be convective in nature so a little pop-up shower and storm here and some areas don't get anything at all Fr uh, Wednesday afternoon we get back into that sunshine so there's your forecast for tomorrow that's 17 by the way away from the lake if you're downtown or right along the lake shore it'll be closer to about uh, 10 to 12 degrees so cooler near the lake a father and son are fighting for their lives tonight after fire broke out at a high-rise in Etobicoke Shauna Hunt with the terrifying moments and the frantic mission to rescue the two victims. Flames erupted in this unit on the fourth floor of this building in the Bloor and Kipling area. We can see significant fire damage and broken windows. It all happened just after 930 in the morning and residents tell me they heard what sounded like two loud explosions. <laughs> 
Dramatic moments at this high rise on Maybell Avenue in Etobicoke as fire crews used an aerial truck to access the burning unit. Tammy was on the sidewalk below when the fire began. I was waiting at the bus stop and uh, we saw flames coming from the fourth floor balcony and then the flames went and it was just all smoke. When our crews arrived they encountered uh, very heavy smoke. They made way into the apartment. They found uh, two people in the apartment. Initially, both men were without vital signs, but were resuscitated after firefighters carried them down four flights of stairs to paramedics waiting outside. They were on top of him, like pushing, and even in the ambulance, they stayed for like five, ten minutes. You could see the ambulance moving up and down as they were doing compressions, and luckily they got a pulse, and he's at the hospital now. Both victims of this fire remain in hospital in critical condition. Neighbors tell City City News. They are father and son and are well known in the neighborhood. Every other Wednesday we go to like the church dinner and then I see them there as well too. They're very kind and sweet people. The fire department made a really quick response. I think if they were admitted or two later I don't think they would have been able to get John and William out. Neighbors also tell us they believe the father uses an oxygen tank and wondered if that may be connected to the loud bangs they heard. Toronto Fire has not yet confirmed that as they continue to investigate the cause. Fortunately, today was uh, so sad. I just hope the you know the father and the son make it. Toronto Fire investigators were on scene for most of the day and were being told that the Ontario Fire Marshal's office has also been notified. In Etobicoke, Shauna Hunt City News. A look to the streets now where a cyclist is dead after being struck by a pickup truck in the Don Valley. Investigators say a 59-year-old man was biking north on Bayview Avenue near the Evergreen Brickworks just before 9.30 this morning. The truck was on the DVP off-ramp when the two collided. Paramedics say the cyclist suffered critical injuries and died in hospital. Police say the driver stayed at the scene. There is no word yet on what caused the crash or any potential charges. A Mississauga man has been charged with second-degree murder tonight in connection with the death of a Malton man. 23-year-old Muhammad Khan was arrested after 58-year-old Keith Lasaga died of injuries suffered in an assault in a lobby of an apartment building on Darcel Avenue near Derry Road and the 427 on January 29th. Lasaga was rushed to hospital in critical condition and died March 23rd. The suspect and victim are not known to one another. The man accused of murdering a Toronto police officer will be taking the stand in his own defense this week. But as Erica Natividad tells us, Umar Zamir's lawyers are already setting the stage for his testimony. Barry Raftery, a collision reconstructionist and forensic engineer taking to the stand today as an expert witness for the defense. Raftery supporting the findings of Toronto Police's collision reconstruction investigation, which found that Constable Jeffrey Northrup was already on the ground before he was fatally run over. Previously, Detective Sergeant Jeff Bassingwaite, a collision reconstructionist with Toronto Police, said the evidence points to Northrop making glancing contact with the front driver's side fender of Zamir's BMW as it swung out in reverse. The force of that contact, he said, would have knocked Northrop down towards the centre of the laneway and put him on the ground before the vehicle moved forward. In his testimony, Raftery agreeing with Bassingwaite's assessment. Quote, the officer was not struck while standing up. He didn't get hit by the front bumper and he did not land on the engine hood. The defense's expert taking the jury step by step through his own process and how he landed on his conclusion. Raftery adding further analysis, pinpointing what he called a forward lower blind zone, where Officer Northrup, who he stressed would have been on the ground, would not have been visible to Zamir as he drove forward. Now, all of this refutes eyewitness testimony from the three officers who were there that night in July 2021. All three of those officers testifying that they saw Northrop standing with his hands up, palms out before impact. Prosecution will have a chance to cross-examine tomorrow morning at the University Avenue Courthouse. Erica Natividad, City News. Next on City News. Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins were in town tonight to take on the Maple Leafs in the home stretch of the regular season. We'll have the Scotiabank Arena for highlights next. They're here. The bold taste of buffalo is at Popeye's for a limited time. Try the buffalo crispy chicken wrap or the loaded buffalo poutine before they're gone.
Stop dreaming. Start shopping. Red Tag Days are on at Toyota with great offers on select models. Find yours today at shoptoyota.ca. What if the most interesting shoes in your closet aren't in your closet? They're out here, here, and here. Clothing and footwear that's made to be lived in. Marks. Macaroni or cheese? Don't you mean macaroni and cheese? No. No? No. Most reward programs limit you to cash back or points. Limit what you can get with your rewards and limit the ways you can earn, redeem, and save. Reached your limit? Leave them behind with Avion Rewards. Get real cash back and savings from over 2,000 brands and points you can use for almost anything. Leave limits behind. Join Avion Rewards today. Check out this shoe that altered my brain chemistry. New hands-free Skechers slip-ins. It's like slip-ins have an invisible built-in shoehorn so my foot slides into place. Then the patented heel pillow technology keeps my foot comfy and secure. Mind blown. Are your floors as clean as you think? Try Swiffer Sweeper Wet. It gives me the cleaning power of a mop and the convenience of a wipe. These cloths trap dirt and grime, even hidden dirt you can't see, so it doesn't get pushed around. Swiffer Sweeper Wet, love it or your money back. In my Louisiana, jazz has a way of making me sway. Cajun goes way into the night. Zodico is the only way to move me. It's right. In my Louisiana, blues is a way of life. When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul. After 10 straight games on the road, it is finally time for the Jays home opener. 48th in franchise history, and they're giving the ball to Jose Barrios. Toronto has won both of his starts this season. Top two, Barrios. Great breaking ball, sits down Cal Raleigh. Then with two away, Barrios punches out Dominic Canzone, his third K early. Bottom three, one nothing Toronto, man aboard. Bo Bichette drives one off the wall. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. advances to third on the double, and after a walk, Davis Schneider up to the plate. Blue Chase up one to nothing, looking for more here in the bottom of the third. Bases loaded, one out. And Schneider pokes it to center, and that's and down for a base hit. Guerrero in to score, and Bichette behind him. It's three to nothing. Schneider, seven RBI in eight games this season. It is three nothing. Blue Jays early. Bottom four, Vladdy at the dish. Rips one to the gap, and Kevin Kiermeyer is going to come around to score on the double. Guerrero Jr. finishes two for four with an RBI. It is four nothing. Blue Jays, top five. Back to Barrios, gets some help behind him. Kevin Biggio, great diving stop, and he fires to first in time for the out. Look at that, full extension. Still in the frame, man on. Barrios sits down. Josh Rojas swinging. The Jays starter, five Ks through six innings. He was looking real nice. Top seven, Barrios still on the mound, and he's going to pick up. His sixth strikeout of the game. He shuts out the Mariners over six and two-thirds innings. Leaves to a big ovation. His third straight quality start as Toronto wins their third straight home opener. Yeah, I mean, that was great. I mean, starts on the mound. Hosey was awesome. You know, really, we we're, were really short in the pen tonight. And, um, you know, he stepped up. But huge at bats, uh, Kirky, Schneid, um, Izzy. And then, you know, kind of tacking on runs there at the end is a big thing. Um, you know, Bo and Vlad doing their thing, getting another run in there. Just it's everyone kind of, you know, um, doing doing what they're supposed to do tonight. Um, great defense as well. So that was a that was a complete ball game. Leafs end Penguins second period. Jake McCabe drives Sidney Crosby knee first into the goal post and he gets called for interference. Now Crosby was shaken up after the play, but he'd be okay back on the bench. Sid blames his skates. He says, if I had new skates, I never would have fallen. So he gets new ones. Late second, Ilya Samsonov makes a save. Bobby McMahon then swats at the puck and he hits Crosby in the face. The play is blown dead, but look at this replay. After review, it's ruled that McMahon 
didn't well, actually hit Sid with his there, stick. He hits the puck into Sid's face, so no anyway, penalty is actually called, and Mike Sullivan and cannot believe it. Not long after, Crosby's rough there, period there continues as he collides with Matthews. Both men slow to get up, but both would be okay. Third period, Toronto on the power play. The draw for Pittsburgh. It's fired back to Matthews. Scores! 65! He's matched Ovi! And the Leafs have the lead! Matthews, of course, 65 goals. He ties Ovi for second most in a season since 1993-94. That Lemieux guy was pretty good. Under seven to play. Crosby plays it back to the point. The shot is stopped, but Drew O'Connor buries the rebound to tie the game at two. And this has been so much fun. Why not some free hockey? Go to overtime. In the extra frame, Matthews passes to the point. Now watch this. Mitch Marner is about to change, but Tyler Bertuzzi jumps back off the ice to avoid too many men. So play continues. And good thing, because Matthews then feeds Jake McCabe, of all people, who scores his first career OT winner. Kyle Dubas and Jason Spezza not very happy and I can't blame them as the Leafs take it 3-2. to two. Huge rivalry at the Women's Worlds USA and Canada. Both teams undefeated in the preliminary round. First place in Group A on the line. Off the opening draw, Canada setting the tone. Renata Fast lays out Kendall Coyne Schofield. A big hit early. We go to the second period, Jocelyn LaRock, huge hit on Abby Murphy, but LaRock gets two minutes because he can't body check. Ensuing U.S. power play, Hannah Bilka on the rebound, but she's robbed by Anne Renee Debien. She keeps the game scoreless through two late in the third. Still no love lost. Bilka, big collision with fast along the boards, and Bilka goes to the box for the hit. Ensuing power play, the Americans Break out, Coin Schofield across to Hillary Knight, goes to the backhand, but Debian shuts the door again. We need overtime in OT. Brianne Jenner gets tripped. There's no call on the play. It's a three on one the other way for the U.S. And Kirsten Sims buries it five hole past Debian. Sims, first of the tournament, the Americans lock up Group A, one nothing. Next on City Despite News. Despite reports of progress, both sides say Gaza ceasefire talks are still deadlocked as Israel pulls some troops out of the south, leaving behind death and destruction. We've got another sprinter. A what? Someone who's done with winter but ready for spring. Huh. Sprinter. <clears throat> I'll go. Finish your page. Another one. Ever wonder what's around the next corner? Past the trees. Over the mountains. That's where adventure lives. Take a Nissan SUV and go find it. Wendy's presents Cromagnon. A fancy French word we made up to describe our French onion cheeseburger. Melted cheese, caramelized and crispy onions on fresh, never frozen Canadian beef. Okay, someone just did laundry. No, I add downy light so the freshness really lasts. Yeah, most scented stuff gives me a headache, but this is just right. And I don't like anything, but I like this. Get a light scent that lasts with no heavy perfumes or dyes. There's a story here for you. The family camps. Waiting to be told. It might include far away galaxies. Or tales from the past. A man can use. It might even feature some side characters. Cecile swims. People mountain bike in a forest. Everyone who visits. Comes home with a different story. A group in a white water raft. So come find out. What happens in yours? Plan your Parks Canada visit. 450,000 square kilometers of stories. Parks Canada. Bleeding gums are serious, Jamie. Dr. Garcia? Whoa. You're a sign of bacterial infection. Crest Gum Detoxify with antibacterial fluoride works below the gum line to help strengthen gums and reduce bleeding. Crest saves the day. Crest.
ambition is driven by breaking barriers. Farming the future. Analyzing crime. Connecting everything everywhere. Redefining beauty. Good evening, East. Reporting fearlessly. Times are tough, groceries are expensive, people get angry. Do you think a protester was involved in this? This is about the executive who was murdered, isn't it? But it's all over the news. They're gouging their customers. It's bread, can't we just have bread? I'm just a wholesaler. These guys, they're the Death Star. Well, obviously, her name still carries a lot of weight. Her family still owns the majority of the share. I was assured that you could handle this. No one said anything about killing anyone. Breaking news from North York tonight, where a police officer has been seriously injured while making an arrest. The officer was called to the Young and Kingsdale Avenue area north of Shepherd for reports of five males attempting to steal a car. While making the arrest, an officer was hurt and transported with a serious but non-life-threatening injury. Two males were arrested. City News crews are heading to the scene. We'll have updates on this developing story on citynews.ca and BT in the morning. Palestinians returning to demolished homes as conflicting reports emerge on Gaza ceasefire talks. Early Monday, Egypt's state media reported that Israel, Hamas and mediating parties had all agreed on the basic points for a deal and that delegations would hash out the final terms this week. But a senior Hamas official says that's not true. The official who asked not to be named said, quote, there is no change in the position of the occupation, and therefore, there is nothing new in the Cairo talks. An Israeli official also confirming that a deal isn't close. Israel and Hamas sent teams to Egypt on Sunday for another try at reaching a ceasefire in the deadly conflict that's now been going on for six months. Israel's assault on the enclave has now killed more than 33,000 people and left much of the Strip's 2.3 million residents homeless, with many at risk of famine. The IDF withdrawing some of its forces from southern Gaza over the weekend leaving behind a trail of destruction and the smell of death. More than 50 bodies have been recovered in Khan Yunus so far, with more believed to be buried under the rubble. Questions remain over what Israel's withdrawal means for 1.5 million Palestinians sheltering in Rafah, after an official said troops were, quote, far from stopping operations in the enclave. Brandon Chogri, City News. Get moving in the morning with breakfast television. The information you need, the inspiration you want, and moments you didn't expect. It's mornings with a dash of mayhem. Thank you! Rise and shine with breakfast television. Ladies and gentlemen. Out there, it's a beast. It's hunger for adventure insatiable. Behold, the Subaru Cross Trek Wilderness. When I moved from Iceland, I found the yogurts to be too sweet and artificial tasting. So I created my own. Sikis, on average, 35% less sugar and 75% more protein than leading yogurts. Most reward programs limit what you can get with your rewards. Want points you can use on almost anything? And deals from over 2,000 brands? Leave limits behind. Join Avion Rewards today. The road to opportunity is often the road overlooked. At Enterprise Mobility, we guide companies to unique solutions from our team of mobility experts. Because we believe the more ways we all have to move forward, the further we'll all go. My life is full of questions. How do I clean an aioli stain? Here's Tide. Do I need to pre-treat guacamole? No, it's Tide. Why do we even buy napkins? Thankfully, Tide's the answer to almost all of them. Do crabs have eyebrows? Except that one. For all of life's laundry questions, it's got to be Tide. Meet Sarah, caught in the chaos of last-minute vacation planning. Wait, you booked it already? And just like that, Sarah is officially going on vacation next week. 
Need help? From planning to packing to paradise. It's what redtag.ca does best. Book your last minute escape today with redtag.ca. Travel made easy. Redtag.ca. Closed captioning provided in part by the 495 fill up at KFC. Get in on finger licking good original recipe slider, fries, and a side today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 18 years old. So does it dance, does it help with that? It's actually triggered specifically by dance. Wow. You just set the bar for what dance should look like on this stage for this season. A Andrew? They don't know if he's gonna make it. <laughs> Hudson and Rex, new episode Tuesday, 9, 8 central on City TV. Uh, warm day today, especially for areas away from the lakeshore. We managed to top out at 13 degrees. That was after the solar eclipse because we kind of took a, about a degree temperature dip as that sun got uh, uh, covered by the moon. Now, these are your morning wake-up temperatures. It may be about 2 degrees. That's a cool start in Oshawa, so close to the freezing mark. And then the wind is going to be coming out of the east here. So Burlington, Oakville, anywhere right along the lake where you see that green hugging the lakeshore, that's your cooler temperature. You get away from the lake. Uh, likely into the 20s, possibly. Halton Hills, Caledon, Orangeville, Shelburne. It's going to be a warm day tomorrow. Now, this was the cloud that was over the GTA here during the eclipse. It is now has been pushing out towards eastern Ontario, but it's all attached to this low that is going to be bringing in tomorrow's storm risk. And here's the thing. It is hit and miss. It is not going to be everyone. It'll be like little pockets of showers on and off here. Multiple rounds, but not for the same areas. And many areas will walk away dry. Then comes a Texas low going into the rest of the week. A rainy end to the week. I'll show you how much in a second, but it's also going to bring in some strong wind gusts. Friday night, those gusts are expected to be anywhere from 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. Once we start talking about 90 kilometers per hour, that's when we start talking about the potential for damaging winds. So we'll keep an eye on, you know, the latest forecast for Friday night winds, but also Thursday through Saturday morning. This is a widespread 10 to 25 millimeters, kind of like a consistent rainfall here for two, two and a half days. Uh, so you're going to need rain gear from Thursday right through to Saturday morning. Uh, as far as tonight goes, though, overnight, that's your morning wake-up temperature, 4 degrees. It'll be mainly clear, and we will get some sunshine in the morning, as well as through the afternoon. Like, it's not an overcast day. It'll be mainly cloudy with that isolated chance for showers. And again, that 17 is away from the lake. It'll be about 10 to 12 degrees uh, down along the lakeshore, or if you're heading over to Billy Bishop Airport, it's cooler over there as well. And there's the effect of that Texas low for the end of the week. Thursday to Friday rain, even into Saturday morning, but Friday night into Saturday. That's when the strongest winds will be before we dry out through the second half of the weekend. Getting in and out of the downtown core is about to get a little more difficult. Lane closures have returned to the Gardner tonight and they'll be in place for a long time. One eastbound lane is now closed between Dufferin and Strawn with closures of a second lane as needed. The eastbound on-ramp from Lakeshore east of Jameson will also be shut down. Work crews will move to the westbound side of the highway as soon as Wednesday, reducing it to two lanes over the same stretch. The closures will be in place until at least 2027. If you see smoke rising from High Park during your drive along the Gardner on Tuesday, don't be alarmed. City staff will be conducting a prescribed burn during the day. The controlled fires are nothing new. They're held every year to help restore and protect some of the rare plant species in the park. Toronto News is always available on citynews.ca and City News 24-7. Now streaming on Rogers, Ignite Channel 100 and on Amazon Prime. Your next City News comes tomorrow morning on BT. Thank you for watching. Good night.
following program contains mature subject matter, forced language, and content that some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised.